Hey everyone, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Super excited to see my friend Keith Fitzgerald again. Keith is a fellow Pacific Northwesterner, so it's a good to have you. Uh, good to have you on, Keith. Thank you. It's always great to be here. Looking forward to this myself because process is very, very important to me. So Keith's the uh, principal at Fitzgerald Group, and, and Keith, we were talking just before we started about about process and and the goal at year end. I know for me is to look back and think about what's happened. And, and now it's it's hard in this year to get your head around everything that has happened. But you know, in your own process, I'd love to just start with, how do you think about, how do you look back during a year and just evaluate your performance? Where do you start with something like that? Well, frankly, if we're doing our jobs right, Dave, we start at the same place we left off the prior year. And we do what's called scenario analysis. I'm not a big believer in screeners or magic voodoo dolls or spinning Pepsi bottles or any of the other tools people seem to use to think they're going to plan out the financial markets. What we do is we literally frame it around a process. And it's not just stock selection or sector selection or technical analysis. We use really a quantum mentalist approach. We're matching numbers with fundamentals with value. And that to me has very specific steps. We want to know what where we are in the process, how we're performing, and where we've been when we come out on the other side. So we go through this with each trade, we go through this with each year, uh, and that's how we wind up where we are today. And that's interesting. And then as you go along with that, how do you gauge progress? How do you gauge improvement? Or what are you looking for along the way? Well, for us particularly, what we want to find out is, you know, we have a set grouping of assumptions at the beginning. So it's like playing a football game or, or being an F1 racer, for example. You have a specific scenario that you want to see played out during the course of your race. Do you need certain tires? When are your pit stops? How are your fuel consumption going to look? What's your driver doing? So when we're talking about stocks, for example, did we see the kind of expectations that we sought to have happen during the year actually play out? So for example, in last February, I was one of very few people on national television saying, I think the markets are not recognizing the seriousness of the virus. We had a scenario in hand that was calling for the massive rollover of the financial markets. So when that happened, a lot of other people were caught by surprise. We simply looked at it and said, you know what, this is happening. We take that playbook off the shelf and we go right down to the races. So it wasn't a time of great angst for us. It was a time of simple adjustment. It's interesting. So you highlighted one of your, you know, great calls this year, which is, a, you know, realizing the, the potential severity or potential downside. If I could ask you to flip that over, where do you feel like you could have done better? Where's an opportunity that or, or an area that you feel like you struggled as, a, as an investor, as a strategist this year? Well, that's an interesting one because we were just talking about that before we came on air. You know, we made the same mistake that a lot of investors make. You know, when the recovery started to happen, uh, April, May, we started to really come out of this. We simply didn't own enough. You know, we could have gone heavier. We could have taken on bigger positions, but we didn't because we didn't know the optics. We hadn't seen anything like this before. We understood the scenario, but what we didn't understand was the ferocity of the recovery. So, <clears throat> excuse me. If I look back to our process here and I'm going to improve it for next year, one of our key goals is to make sure we understand position sizing better. Mm, interesting. What I'm curious, you know, when you when you talk about this beautiful uh, process of sort of thinking along the way of how you're of how you're doing as an investor, which, you know, I think you can only look back effectively and evaluate your progress if you've had done a really good job of tracking things along the way, right, and keeping a good journal of, of what you're doing and how you're thinking. Can you talk through your process for how you, you know, uh, follow uh, trades or calls? What do you do along the way to make sure that you have a good track record to, to look back on? That's a very interesting question. So we handle it a little differently than everybody else does. Um, again, we look to the scenario. So are we in scenario A, scenario B, scenario C? Depending on what scenario we're in, we know that we're going to want certain stocks, certain sectors, you know, we're going to want exposure to certain things. Right now, for example, I'm very concentrated on a group I call the Global Challengers. These are people, these are companies with CEOs that are literally changing the world we live in because I'm tracking investment potential, not just in 2021, but five, 10 years from now. I want to get ahead of what I see as a massive recovery. So from a process standpoint, are we matched up with the right scenario? Do the sectors that we have are looking at have the right combination of value and momentum? And again, process is not just 
how are you doing things? It's why are you doing things? Are you meeting your expectations? Are you moving in a direction that you expect to move in given your objectives? And that's an important distinction because a lot of people like to throw spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. That's not process. Process <laughs> means you want to know what's going to happen when you throw the spaghetti against the wall, how many noodles are going to stick, what they're going to look like, and which ones you want to pick up on the floor and which ones you want to leave there. That's <laughs> actual process because if you don't have that, you're really going to be in a mess in the kitchen. On the other hand, if you do understand what you're doing, why you're doing it, and when you're doing it, you stand a realistic chance of improving your results. And again, most investors and traders do not understand that. It took me years to arrive in that space. I thought, like a lot of people, oh, all I have to do is pick the right stocks, or all I have to do is get the right secret you know, magic technique, or I just have to get this thing or that thing. No, what I have to do is flip that around and learn how to use each of those tools at the right moment on the right stock. So it's right stocks, right moment, right tactics. That's true process. And again, within the framework of what do I want to get out of it? So measuring for me, looking at it at the end of the year is, did I achieve the results per trade I wanted? Could I have gone heavier? Should I have been lighter? Was I too exposed to risk? You know, was the volatility such that I slept peacefully at night or did I lose a lot of sleep? Uh, you know, those are the kinds of questions that I use to evaluate process. So you hit on a really good point there. Uh, you, you hit on many good points, <laughs> but, but one in particular was just your mental state, right? I think, you know, part of looking at your process is your performance, right? You can look numbers wise. What was your report card? Did you get it done as an investor, as a trader or not? But you just hit on more of the emotional state or, or the mental state, right? How did you feel during that period? How do you look more at that side and how do you think about how you approach these markets in, a, in an unprecedented year, you know, how did you approach it mentally? Do you have ways of measuring your performance that way, or at least your, the way you approach it from a, a mental perspective? How do you think about that side of it? Well, I do. Uh, you know, and again, it took me years of years of making plenty of mistakes to figure this out. This is not an easy process, but the way forward for me has been to practice, to go to the school of hard knocks, to pay lots of tuition in the form of losses over the years. Because what you do is you figure out your particular style, your particular objectives, and your particular tactics. And that's really critical as well. It took me a long time to figure that out. And the secret is really learning what four or five tactics you understand so well that no matter what happens in the headlines, no matter what risks hit the market, you've got a tactic in your playbook that you can immediately go to and potentially turn into profits no matter what's happening in the marketplace. So for example, on big down days, many investors want to cower or run for the exits. I look at those things and say, you know what, this is cool. I can sell puts and I can actually buy those stocks that maybe got away from me or maybe I want to add positions. You know, Palantir lately has been a great example or uh, Luminar has been another great example. You know, I, I made the mistake of not being heavy enough in both of those stocks, but each pullback, I could use that as an opportunity to sell puts, which is a tactic I love. I have a trade called the fence trade where I'm simultaneously doing one thing and buying another that allows me to play it within a certain window. So I don't really have to make a timing decision. But again, those are unique to my style. Other people like to simply buy the stock or maybe nibble it in shares, average it. You got to understand if you're going to have a process, you got to understand that your own mental discipline, your own mental makeup is critical to what tactics you use and when you use them. You know, you brought up uh, selling puts as a, as, a, as a different way of making a play, different lever you could pull. And I'm curious how you would advise investors, how you coach investors that, are, you know, that aren't familiar with that sort of thing. Where does education fit into this journey? Or do you have a normal process of incorporating, you know, how do you focus enough time on, on getting, you know, picking the right stocks and making the right trades, but also at some point you have to keep improving your whole process, improving your discipline. How do you incorporate education into your growth as an investor? What do you, what do you coach people to do, you know, thinking about going into new year? Well, I coach people to do the same thing that I was coached to do. Uh, you know, I try to spend a couple hours a week learning new techniques, evaluating what I'm doing, studying tactics that maybe I thought I understood well. I try to figure out what went wrong. But importantly, and again, this is really underestimated. If you go into battle 
many times there's a debrief afterwards, a post-action report that has to get filed, particularly by our special warfare guys. And what they do is they look at what only went wrong, but what went right. Because you've got to not only figure out your mistakes, you've got to figure out what you did right so that you can begin to maneuver yourself into that frame of mind or that tactical suite or, or that action on the objective that is going to give you the highest probability of success. Because you can't just, again, you can't just throw tactics out there because somebody else uses them and hopes they're going to be great. They've got to match your mental makeup. And part of improving that is learning when to recognize a trade is truly one that you want to take versus a trade that is great for somebody else because you don't have the right tactical suite. There's plenty of opportunities that I pass on, for example, even though I think they're going to be great trades or maybe they're really cool or somebody I trust is taking that trade because they don't fit with my process. They don't fit with my tactics and I don't want to touch them because again, what I've learned over the years is where I screw up is when I go away from my own process. When I say, you know, I'm going to just try this for the heck of it, or I don't really fully understand it. So, Education, a couple hours a week, certainly every month I'm reading something, I'm trying to take in knowledge, I'm constantly asking questions, talking to people, talking to my mentors. I mean, there's any number of things you can do, but the worst mistake you can do is not ask a question. I, you hit on so many great things there, Keith, and I, I love as you, uh, as you talk about a, a, an ongoing learning process. I think a lot of people sort of think, all right, I'm trading, I'm trading. All right, now I'm going to focus a little bit on education for a while. And it really is, a, it's one of the things that attracted me to this industry in the first place was the fact that you could keep, keep growing over time. You hit on a really key point there in your, in your last comment about accountability. Uh, and you mentioned reaching out to a mentor of yours. How do you uh, think of accountability or how do you suggest people incorporate that? How should they be collaborating with others or, or, or having someone else at least keep them honest in terms of what they're doing? <laughs> I'm chuckling because my great grandfather was a fighter pilot in World War I and <laughs> he used to hit me in the chest with his cane and he used to look at me, he's calling me Mr. Keith and he's like, Mr. <laughs> Keith, the only some bitch that matters is the one that's looking out at you in the mirror every morning. And <laughs> It took me a long time to understand that, but what Gramps was driving at is something that many people today, especially in the investing and trading community, don't want to acknowledge. It's always somebody else's fault. The market always did this. The Fed did that. The headline said this. China this. Russia that. The politics here. You know what? At the end of the day, you, the, you being the person you see in the mirror, is the one that bears responsibility for your actions. It's your money. It's your responsibility, which means that if you shift that, then process actually gets very, very simple because you ask yourself, what do I want to do? By when? What tactics do I have at my disposal to make that happen? And should I or shouldn't I make this trade? It's all should I, should I, should I? Not this happened, that happened, who did what to whom? So again, it's, it's, it's this idea of personal responsibility starts in the mirror. But when I look out to a mentor, you know, I, I'll, oftentimes I'll call and say, hey, you know what? I, would, I thought about doing this. I did that. It went against expectations or it went with expectations. You know, have you ever encountered that situation before? And what did you do about it? Um, you know, a lot of times a mentor is not properly understood. A mentor is somebody who is not only going to shortcut you to the path to profits, but potentially they are going to share with you the mistakes that they made and what they learned from it. Because, you know, they can learn just as much as the student can learn. And, and again, people forget that. We don't have a huge mentoring tradition in this country like we do, for example, in Asia and Japan. It's called senpai kohai, senior junior. And, you know, you have that constant dialogue between the senpai and the kohai in anything from sports to flower arranging to cooking to even just simple relationships. Europe, we have a master and apprentice system. Here in America, we're all stubborn. We're all independent, which means we sort of take that for granted, yet we really want it. And I think there's a cultural fabric that I've been very fortunate over the years to inherit, sometimes the hard way, um, but that makes me aware of, of how we attack this problem. Keith, I wish we could keep going for, for the longest time because I'm, I'm enjoying so much hearing your take on this. I'd love to just ask you one final question, just a sure. quick one. You know, someone who's, who's really not been doing a good job at wrapping up the year, thinking about their performance, what would you suggest someone to just get started with approaching this the right way? What would you encourage a, a beginner at this to try to do? Very first thing I would encourage a beginner, any beginner, 
is you can do this. I promise you can do this. The trick is acknowledging that it's you that's actually doing the doing. So number one, um, I would sit down and think about what it is you want to accomplish, why you're doing this, then figure out the how. Everybody else flips this around. I, I talk to a lot of aspiring traders and investors, and they focus on the how first, which means they don't understand the why or the where they're going. And, and you can't, that's like Christopher Columbus. You know, he went out, he had no idea where he was going, no idea where he was when he got there, no idea where he'd been when he got back. So I call that the Christopher Columbus School of Trading uh, and Investing. You can't do that. That's if right. you understand you and you understand why you're doing it and how you're doing it, then it becomes very easy to sort out the how. Now, there's constant practice. There's constant evolution. There's going to be losses. That's just part of the game. But if you understand that going in, then by, I, I'm telling you, you can do this. I have literally helped and spoken with thousands of traders over the years at seminars around the world in the last 20 years. I haven't met a person yet who isn't capable of figuring out at least one way to do something right in the marketplace. And it may take time, it may take plenty of hard knocks, it may make plenty of mistakes. But over time, if you understand that that is part of the process, just like you didn't learn to ride a bike the first time when you took the training wheels off, you can get this done. You can become more consistent. You can become more profitable. You can become a savvier investor. And if you focus on those simple things, the why, the what, the how, over time, you start minimizing those mistakes. So again, you got this, I promise. Just understand that it's a process. It's an arrival, it's a destination, and it's a journey. It's not one and done, you don't figure it out overnight, but you will get there with a little bit of effort, a little bit of education, and a whole lot of practice. That's such an encouraging way to, to end this uh, discussion. Keith Fitzgerald, principal of the Fitzgerald Group, thanks so much for your time today. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.